Welcome back to Sunless Sky. In the last episode, we found Magdalens and started exploring down here and ran into a lot of trouble. Lots of enemies and the peacock wind were right about here. Almost died, but then found that this actually hooks up to Port Prosper. And that's where we're at right now. So I do want to go back to New Winchester soon to heal my hole since I only have... Uh, won't give me the mouse over unless I completely close out of all this stuff, but very, very... Oh, there it is. 5 out of 40 hole. Uh, <laughs> yeah, not doing great. However, there's a couple things I want to do at Port Prosper. There's a bunch of new stuff. Um, let's just start with... I think the first thing I want to do is search for the Amenable Host's identity. If you remember, the Amenable Host is the person who kind of runs... Magdalens, they're the head person. And they were confused about who they were. They had been other people, since that's what they do at Magdalens. They be whoever you need to be to uh, help your patients. And they had been people so often, so long, so deeply, that they're not actually sure who they actually were. So they want me to check a couple places, including Port Prosper. The house might still be here. It had purple walls, which would surely stand out. If not, you have the locket. Not a soul in Port Prosper recognizes the locket. Who's that, then? Does he still wear his hair like that? Fancy. Become familiar refrains. More promising is the house you saw painted in the amenable host's chamber. You locate several candidates, all apparently repainted over the last couple of years. But one is in the exact location as in the host's painting. Nobody seems to remember who owned it or why. But apparently it had once been associated with the Parlor of Virtue, established not long after Port Prosper's foundation. You've uncovered nothing definitively conclusive here. You may return to the amenable host or look elsewhere. Yeah, I wouldn't return to the Amenable Host with just that. I think they had two other locations, if I remember right. They also wanted me to check in New Winchester and Lustrum. Alright, much more to do. We can take a factory tour. Today, the factories of Port Prosper are open to the public. The factories of Port Prosper's east end belch out smoke. Inside, hours mined for the Mother of Mountains are refined. The workers live in tenement blocks adjoining the smokestacks, and are rarely seen in the rest of Port Prosper. Today, the owner of the Windward Refinery is allowing visitors to tour his factory. Lurk in the shadows, admire the factory, or a couple other things I can't do. Yeah, I really want to help the workers, like, rise up and... I don't know what they want to do. Rise up and unionize? Destroy the Windward Company? I don't know. They like me a little bit, but not enough. Yeah, I need to be embraced. Yeah, embraced by the workers or the owners if I wanted to play it that way, but I don't. Lurk in the shadows. This will always increase your eastward reputation. That is, the workers' reputation. Or admire it, and that increases my westward reputation. Well, you know exactly what I'm going to do. 100% chance, 100% chance. Yes, let's loiter. <laughs> From your vantage point in the gloom, you see all sorts of things the other visitors are not privy to. Barrels being assigned to destinations based on bribes rather than need. Fatigued workers revivified by sips of unrefined hours. Several respond poorly and are hauled away to the infirmary. Only the most youthful and vigorous workers have been assigned to the workstations the tours pass through. The rest wait in less sightly rooms in the shadows. One aged man catches your eye and winks. We are welcomed by the impoverished Eastenders. Protesters roar outside the gates of the Fulbright factory. The Admiral Nelson has invest, uh, invested in iron doors. Okay, now we're just back to explore Port Prosper, so we have to wait a bit before we can do another tour. Yeah, so we can't just suddenly uh, become great friends with the impoverished East Enders all in one sitting. we got to keep coming back to this place, which is fair enough. Let's offer transport to settlers. I've already done this before, but there's maybe more people. 
return a settler. I don't have anybody to return, do I? Wait, what? Oh! We're finishing that quest! I f totally forgot about this. Yeah, remember we picked somebody up from Port Prosper long ago that was... Uh, they were kind of in poor health and wanted to go to Titania, thinking that it might be a bit of an oasis where they can heal up, fresh air and all that. And when we got really close to Titania, somewhere around here, they suddenly, like, sprouted a bunch of, I think, plant life or something out of them, just, like, exploded out of their body and they died. And I had a bunch of options about what to do with the body, like investigate it, you know, use it for science, and I picked the one to return their body to their family. Which is, I guess, what I'm doing right now. You find an address among the dead settlers' belongings. A small house, not far from the station. An old woman answers the door, a young child at her elbow. She nods stiffly, she nods stiffly as she sees you. She accepts his crated corpse. You are not invited in. You've delivered a settler. If you visit Queen's Cross in Port Prosper, you can pick up another or inspire a new crop to travel. Inspire a new crop to travel. That sounds like these settlers are growing like produce, and then I pick them and <laughs> deliver them. 100 sovereigns and 50 experience. Yeah, let's see if we can get someone else. I encourage others to seek adventure. A sky story, that's no problem, I've got 22. A returning sky fair is always the center of attention in the East End's pubs. Your tales could inspire listeners to settle at other ports. A crowd gathers to listen to your tales. Your stories of daring escapes and fingernail victories go down almost as well as the whiskey. Ambition dawns in several bloodshot eyes. Some might even follow through on it when sober. You'll now be able to offer another settler transport. Would-be pioneers clamor at the station, eager to make their fortunes amongst the stars. One way to Lustrum, thanking you kindly. By Jove, I think it's finally my time to see the real frontier. He breaks off the handshake to cough into his sleeve. Uh, forgive me. I'm hoping a new climate will improve my health. Please get me there as fast as possible. I'll pay you well if you do. Wait, isn't that what the last person said? Please get me there as fast as possible. Do you think I took too long to deliver that person and that's why they died? But also... Is this a commonality between all these people? Do all these people coming from Port Prosper? Do they all have health problems and they're all gonna die soon? Huh. I mean, I don't want to rush over there if my reward's 100 coin, but they say they'll pay well if I get them there fast, so maybe they give me a bonus? Hmm. Okay, that's done, that's done. This is new. The other company house. Remember, we already spoke to the parsimonious chairman's offices, but... Uh, this is totally new because since the last time we were here, the balance of power in the Reach has shifted. Now, the Windward Company has been kind of kicked out or basically abandoned New Winchester and took refuge here. After the company's fortunes declined in New Winchester, they withdrew to Port Prosper, where the parsimonious chairman received them with barely concealed distaste. The mahogany-walled offices are crammed, and the atmosphere is close. I can deliver port reports to them. Oh, I see, right, because they've abandoned New Winchester. If I wanted to help out them, I guess I probably couldn't turn in port reports here, which is where you do it normally. But since they had to abandon the place, I guess you have to turn it in here. That's interesting, actually. That's very interesting, because as far as I can think, the only way that the Windward Company is going to end up pushed out of New Winchester down to Port Prosper is if you personally are trying to help the Tackadies gain favor in the Reach, gain power in the Reach. I mean, it took a lot. I had to affect the balance of power in the Reach a lot to finally be able to kick the Windward Company out. So I wonder why I would have any reason to then suddenly start helping the Windward Company. 
right? Because if the Windward Company ends up down here, that means I've already been helping the Tacades for a long time. I guess you try to play both sides for some reason, or maybe you had a sudden change of heart and don't like the Tacades anymore. I guess you want to go back on that and start helping the Windward Company. You can come down here and... I wonder if I could move back to New Winchester, if you affect the balance of power enough. Probably. Yeah, I wonder how that old faction system works. Like, if I keep helping the Tacades, is the Windward Company going to be completely pushed out of the Reach? What's going to happen? Anyway. Anything else? I know we still have the Clock Tower thing. I know they need... Yeah, Corster Nectar and Bronzewood. That's not really that much. I mean, I have that just stowed away in my bank, I'm sure. I think they'll just turn me away, or... Yeah, I'm unwelcome at the Windward Company. Nothing I can do there. They want tackety nameplates. Certainly not going to do that. I think we're done here. Yeah, alright. I'm going to head back to New Winchester and get repaired, because my hole is about to explode. Oh, wait. Something else first. They are selling panes of stained glass as a bargain at Port Prosper. I've never seen stained glass sold anywhere, and I need it for something at Lustrum. A gang of grubby urchins are selling stained glass. They have sandwiched the panes between wooden boards and wrapped them in rags. When a passing costermonger asks where they got the glass, a sooty vagabond snaps, Never you mind, and throws his coat over the baleful glass angel adorning the pane they had on display. Oh, whoa. Usually the bargains only sell up to three of the item. Should I get as much as possible? I guess probably. It's quite expensive, and I've never seen a prospect that asks for them, but I'm sure I will at some point. Yeah. Okay. Alright, back to New Winchester. Okay, I have a little bit of a problem in that the Dreadnoughts, the Windward Company, are gonna try to kill me on sight, because that's what I do to them, fair enough. And they're all over this place. This whole pathway leading to Bord Prosper. So that's not good. One good hit from them and I am dead. Five hole. Oh, Tackety, thank God. Keep him distracted. Oh no, that's a Marauder. This whole place is a war zone out here next to Port Prosper. Jesus. Three different factions all fighting. Oh, where the hell am I going? North? Uh, no. Wrong way. Got an abandoned homestead. Let's search it. Failure. A fetid clue. The homestead has already been pillaged. However, an odious smell leads you to a loose floorboard where someone has concealed a bundle of blood-caked valuables. Oh, I think we've seen this once before. Yeah, the rings are still attached to severed fingers and the earrings to ears. Gain five terror. Ooh. Floating supplies as well. And the uh, memorial to the unknown rats up here, which I'm hoping it's been long enough that I can reduce our terror by going there. Yeah, it's been long enough. Just reduced our terror by about 10%. Another homestead. And wait, what is this? Return fire. Uh, this homestead is plated in a patchwork of corrugated iron. Uh, corrugated iron, rather. As you land, the barrel of a rifle pokes out from a boarded window and fires, kicking up a spray of grass at your feet. How unfriendly. Interesting. I've never seen that event before at a homestead. Hmm. 53% chance of success. Return fire! Success. Your rounds ring off the house's iron skin and find the gaps between its makeshift plates. Eventually, someone waves a white bedsheet from the window and throws out a satchel that clinks with jewelry and silver. 45 sovereigns and supplies. Oh, I can't even fit the supplies. Uh, 
Mm, I'm, supplies are worth more than fuel. I'm going to toss a fuel. Back in New Winchester. Terror has been reduced a lot just by coming back to port, which is really nice. It was over 50% again. Let's do the identity thing for the amenable host. A titan of industry. Those are rare outside of Albion. The initial search is fruitless. People giggle at the antiquated fashion on display in the daguerreotype, the tilt of the jaw, the unfortunate arrangement of hair. But the proprietor of the round table seems to recognize the face. Oh, yes. Right sod he was. She holds the locket up to catch the falling starlight through a window. Wanted to open a factory here a few years back. Something went wrong and there was a workers' revolt. Not been seen since. Just getting little fragments, huh? Oh, I wanted to talk about something, by the way. I think the last time I looked at buying a ship. Uh, the engine yard. Last time I looked at buying a ship, I remember I did some calculations looking at what I would want um, as far as, like, other add-ons that I would need to be happy with the ship and how much the ship itself costs, adding that together. And I think I came up with a number for this ship of around 3,000. I think it was about 3,000 or so. I obviously have enough money for that, although it might be cutting it a little bit close, actually. Because you do need money left over to, you know, buy prospects and things like that. But I've decided that I want to just save up for one of these others. There's two others that cost 3,500. I feel like I'm, I'm close, you know? Even though I'm probably not that close because I want a significant amount more than 3,500 to buy extra stuff and whatnot. But still, I want to save up for something better than the Parsifal class Courser, because this thing, I don't know, it just doesn't seem that good. It's not bad. It is an upgrade, but it just doesn't seem worth it. I don't think I'd be like, wow, new ship. This thing is so much better. It would be a marginal upgrade, I think, and I would end up with very little money left over. So I think I'm best just saving up. Okay, next place I want to head is... Lustrum. Yeah, two, actually no, three things to do there. I have everything that I need for Murgatroyd, that, uh, for that odd thing that I found in the mountain. They need a pane of glass, munitions, and one bronze wood. So I'm going to bring that to them so we can do that. Um, I also should be, I should have some results from my mining crew that I left there. I'm sure they've mined up some barrels of unseasoned hours, so I think I'll grab those. And also that's the third and final place that I need to go to, to find the amenable host's identity. So, let's go. We're at Lustrum now. Got into a little bit of trouble with some scribe spinster things on the way here. I just tried to run away from them, I didn't try to attack them, but they got a couple shots into me. It's fine. And there's actually even more to do here than I thought. There's not just three things, there's four things. Because I forgot that we have that settler that we just got from Port Prosper. And this time, they didn't sprout roots out of them. They didn't just, like, explode into plants. They've arrived at their destination. Whether or not they still wish to be here is another matter entirely. You've made good time. They should reward you well. Yeah, it sounds like you really do get a bonus, or the potential for a bonus if you get here fast. Lustrum sings its own song. The mines ring, the caverns howl, the machines roar. The settler apologizes for not shaking your hand. You understand. You're well aware that his condition hasn't improved, what with the nightly retching and the coughing incident in the mess the other day. He smiles weakly and departs. I do wonder if all the people I'm going to pick up from Port Prosper are going to be sickly. Could just be a coincidence that I got two in a row. 150 sovereigns, not bad. Nothing amazing, though. What shall we do first? Let's do... Let's do the Murgatroyd thing. I'm really curious about what that thing was that we found up in the mountains. It was damn hard to get it. Oh, right. We can probably try another type of tea. Yeah. Let's enjoy a cup of tea. Five sovereigns. Reduce our terror. 
Last time I tried Indulgence Blend. Straight from the Blue Kingdom. That was that super nasty stuff that tasted like dust from a... from the furthest corner of a sepulcher or something. Let's try Eleutherian Gold. It looks like tea with the occasional sparkle. A single sip and you feel slightly dizzy. Two sips and you struggle to find your legs. The sense of pleasurably disconnected... Bon... Bonamy? Uh, lingers for a few hours. Let's bring them their components. She waits eagerly for her supplies. Her gunpowder-stained fingers twitch at the possibilities. Melisine disappears into her workshop for a few hours while you sit and sample her finest teas. On the house, of course. She returns, clutching a spike-covered bronze contraption housing. And... Housing and pushing light through the ambiguous shard. Artifacts of the red science have resonance, obviously. We can track them with this. Probably. So long as the shard doesn't explode. That's unlikely, though. Fairly unlikely. Well, nothing ventured. I'll meet you on the mountain. <laughs> Alright, let's go. I guess... Well... Before I crawl up there, hopefully I don't have to pass that skill check again. Let's do the other stuff. Search for the amenable host's identity. Successful prospectors tend to leave their mark on the mountain. People remember those who were able to leave, flush with hours. The logit is passed around the camps of prospectors. Most scratch their heads. Others sigh and look away. An elderly prospector approaches, carrying her hat in her hands. You're the one looking for old Gray? She sighs. Long dead. Shot south of the mountain. Wouldn't share his hours. Fool. No point rising high on the mountain if there's no one at the bottom holding you up. Huh. Well, that's all the places that the amenable host said I could go. All the places they remembered something from, so... I guess I'll bring that to them, but... What are they gonna do? I'm not much closer to knowing who they are. Oh god, I do have to pass the skill check again, don't I? <laughs> the 16% chance of success, and it costs two supplies. Oh, this is new. I just explored Lustrum. There's a commotion at the end of the high street. Two prospectors drag a wounded man on a small sledge. His legs are broken, frozen blood glinting on a splinter of exposed bone. Oof. His right arm has been folded onto his chest. It shouldn't bend that way. Bloody windward netties, mutters the wary prospector, taking a nip of whiskey from his flask. The injured man is rushed into the pub for whatever treatment can be found in cheap bottles. All other medication left town weeks ago, along with Lustrum's last doctor. Lend assistance, pretend to lend assistance, or keep walking. Uh, lend assistance. A few supplies to spare. The arm is dislocated. You lack the medical supplies to stop the poor wretch's pain as you wrench it back into its socket. Ugh. His teeth all but bite through the wooden stick you press in his mouth. Fortunately, he soon passes out. His fellow prospectors have little to offer in gratitude save the contents of their pockets, but promise that the first round of drinks is on them. There's also another event happening. The mountain sings. Wind whistles through the mountain's caves, promising good luck to the miners below. They raise their tankards and toast the fortunate promises. Recruit crew amongst the miners or join the celebration. Well, I don't need any more crew, so let's join the celebration. Cheers rise to the mountain and its bounty of hours, until the soft panpipe sounds fade and the backbreaking work of mining must begin again. After another drink or two, of course. Something to ward off the chill of the cold mountain slopes. Dire is reduced. Good, I'm going to need that, because I think I really do have to climb the mountain with that damn skill check again. <sighs> okay, well. Oh, wait. The claim fields. No, that's... No, no, no. I, I don't want to do anything with my claim just yet. Yeah, let's just buy... A bunch of supplies. 
That's going to be expensive. Attempt to climb the mountain. 16% chance of success and cost two supplies each time. Failure. Failure. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right, there's over 200 sovereigns worth of supplies taken up. Here's 320 worth of supplies. Jesus. I just got an idea. Can I switch any officers to give me more iron? Oh, yes. Six iron. Uh, you have a little bit of iron, too. Iron versus... Oh my god. If I switch everybody, I'll have way more iron. Should have done that a while ago, huh? Uh, yeah. What percent chance was it? 16%? Well, let's go back and maybe it'll recalculate that 23% chance. That's not as much of an increase as I thought, but that's significant. I'll take it. Jesus Christ, I'm up to 50%. Come on, I've already invested like 500 coin in this. I swear to God. I swear to God, I'm at 65%. What the fuck? 70%. 75%? Really? Is this a joke? I'm rolling 23% chances and I... Thanks. Well, at least I don't think I'll gain terror going through this horror again, because I just went through it. I should be fine. I also just went to New Winchester and got a terror reduction, so going back there probably won't do anything just yet. Oh boy. Oh boy. Explore the singing caves with Melisine. A small pedal powered flying machine cools off behind her. Certainly a faster way to ascend the mountains. Probably not a safer one. Still, I wish you told me you had that mill sign. I definitely would have taken that. Some of these caves appear natural, winding with no apparent destination or design. Others appear hand-carved, albeit with deep slashes, which suggest that those hands came with extremely unpleasant claws. Melisine follows close behind you, carrying a purple-flamed... a purple-flamed Hour Harker's Lamp along with a little bronze device containing the ambiguous shard. She swings it around in the air. In response, it occasionally makes a click sound. These caves descend deep into the mother of mountains. The occasional breath of wind from outside echoes as light whistling. Your stride booms like a drumbeat. Melisine's awkward footsteps are practically a whole percussion section. Deep in the mountain... Light pours through a crack in the wall. Your skin crawls at its touch. Looking down, you pull away at once. The writhing ceases. The light in the mountain. The crack opens onto a larger cavern where the world has been torn open. The wound casts the light, and the walls writhe at its touch. You lead the way, slipping through quietly. Melisine follows close behind, silencing the hum of her strange device. Shriveled creatures hang from the ceiling in tattered cloaks and cradles of iron and bronze. Polished mirrors and glass lenses arranged around the bright light focus concentrated beams on each of the creatures. They twitch occasionally, but are otherwise immobile. Another of their kind, the one the people of Lustrum call Mr. Pennies, moves between them in awkward, jolting steps. It salts their lips with hours and shuffles on. The light flickers just for a moment, but apparently a moment too long. A creature shivers and screams. In its death throes, it drops something and it clutched to its chest. A statue of sorts. Its last scream echoes through the mountain's tunnels, a piercing screech that cuts to your bone. Somewhere far above, it emerges from the mountain as beautiful music. Whoa. Okay. Mr. Pennies, Mr. Pennies is here. 
They twitch occasionally, otherwise immobile. Um, another of their kind, Mr. Penny. So Mr. Penny's is the same kind of being as these beings that are they are on the ceiling. They hang from the ceiling in tattered cloaks and cradles of iron and bronze. Yeah, kind of just twitching. So Mr. Penny's, the person we met in the corner of the pub, the person we del delivered the uh, cryptozoologist to, I think. They're of the same type, and that's why they were so desperate for hours, and why they mentioned that they wanted the hours for... What do they say? For, like, holding off the inevitable? I guess they think that keeping all these people alive is going to stave off some calamity or something. I want to read a good part of this again. So these polished mirrors and glass lenses and is focusing concentrated beams of light on each of the creatures. Uh, and when the light flickers, that causes one of them to shiver and scream and die. So the light and the hours are keeping them alive or something. The world has been torn open. The wound casts the light. So there's a wound casting light. The light is being specifically focused onto each of the creatures, and those creatures are the same type that Mr. Penny is. And they need to be kept alive, or at least Mr. Penny believes they need to be kept alive, otherwise something bad will happen. Mr. Penny's goes about its strange routine in the writhing light. It spreads hours from a small pot between its various charges, and apparent exchange for the treasures at their feet. Each holds their most precious treasure tight to their chitinous chests, relics of distant worlds, the tears of dead sons, the final evidence of great shames. Oh, it spreads hours from a small pot between its various charges in apparent exchange for the treasures at their feet. Wait, but aren't the treasures only, like, made when they die and drop it? But giving them hours would do the opposite. It would keep them alive. Are they doing this to help them or doing it to gather their treasures? Examine the wound. Attempt to slip away. Attempt to sabotage the array. Make your presence known. No, let's not make ourselves known yet. Let's examine the wound in space. It is unclear if the array of bronze and glass is causing it or merely channeling its light. Pennies is far enough away. You could get a closer look. Science of Treason. I think the light is keeping those creatures alive, whispers Melisine. Remember what I said? Light is law. Usually. The science is... It lets you rewrite the rules. All of them. Even death. But look, I don't think it's working. Maybe something's gone wrong. Maybe it never worked properly. I wish I could play with it. Light is law. It lets you rewrite the rules, even death. Is that why the undead are in the Blue Kingdom, where there's a sun? Keeping them alive? Okay. Well, if I want to actually do something... I can either sabotage or make my presence known. I'm not going to sabotage this thing if I don't even really know what it's all about. So, make my presence known. Mr. Penny seems amiable enough down in Lustrum Town. A not-so-subtle escape. Melisine slips on a pebble. Blast it, she snaps, before realizing. I... The monster that was Mr. Penny's moves too fast to see clearly. Scabbed bat wings unfurl. Its cloak falls back to reveal. All you register is teeth, fury in torn velvet. You back away, twist to run. A trophy underfoot sends you stumbling. Head meets ground. Blackness. When you wake, along with the surprise of waking up at all, you realize your bleeding head has been bandaged and someone has set you as comfortably as possible against the cave walls. Looking around, Melisine is peering at the light array. Mr. Penny's has resumed tending to its charges. Occasionally she turns to ask it questions that are clearly beyond its knowledge. 
So they didn't actually attack us at all, they just freaked out and got ready to attack somebody. But then we just slipped on something. <laughs> and now they're just back to doing their usual thing. Obviously they know we're here, so I guess they don't mean us any harm. Steal something from a treasure? Leave Mr. Penny's lair? <laughs> that sounds creepy. Check on Melisine, talk to Mr. Penny's. Let's check on Melisine, she seems to have filled half a notebook already. Distracted. So if that light is... that glyph... She glances up. I could study this for a lifetime and not understand how it all works. I mean, I'm not going to. Not much use having immortality if it means sitting around in a cave forever. Also, it's cold. Still, I wonder if old Pennies would mind if I came back here later. I could bring my coat. And my clarinet. The acoustics in here are incredible. What are my chances of stealing something? Wow. That seems like a pretty hard skill check. Only a 40% chance, and my veil skill is super high. Let's talk to Mr. Pennies. It busies himself with work, watching you suspiciously and Melisine with the look of a china shop owner witnessing the arrival of a particularly large bull. Our kind lives long, much time for mistakes. Blessed place on chain means mistakes can be mighty. Mr. Penny's salts its own monstrous lips with ours. These the oldest of us, oldest not willing to die, come here to prolong life. Too much to fear from the darkness. The stories. Things on the river with chains and thorns. They choose agony of torpor over chance of consequences. This one did things too. Now sworn to protect elders. Penance. Maybe one day can find forgiveness. Until then, must stay and watch. So all the ones on the ceiling. They've lived a long time and made mistakes and are fearing... Something like some sort of judgment might happen to them after they die, it sounds like. They choose agony of torpor over chance of consequences. And this one, Mr. Penny's, has made mistakes as well. And now as a sort of penance, they're taking care of all the elders, trying to keep them alive. Damn, that's sad. That's really sad. Let's ask about the light array. Mr. Penny's doesn't look like a scientific genius. Yeah, I don't think they made this thing. How did this get set up here? Beyond skill to fix. Bought in trade centuries ago. Filtered light of judgment. Filtered out laws of death. Worked. But now need alternative. Discovered ours. More reliable, but temporary. Need more. Always more. That is so cool. Filtered light of judgment. Filtered out laws of death. Like, that is such a cool idea. That light is law, and you can filter the light to change the law. I wonder if we can fix it. Can we fix it? Uh, let's talk to them again. Let's ask about the creature's treasures. They clutch some tight. Others sit discarded on the floor under their heads. Most important memory of life. Will only let go after final breath. Smaller ones, they not matter so much. Sell for hours in town. Hours keep flames of life glowing a while. Not burning. Not enough wick for fire. Not anymore. But enough for existence. Enough to keep holding on. Okay, so yeah, they're not like... I, I was thinking maybe they're greedy and just like farming these poor, suffering creatures for their treasures. But no, they're just collecting the treasures to sell for hours because they desperately need hours to keep them alive. I'm definitely gonna, not going to steal something from the treasure or sabotage the array. I mean, god, it's pretty bad what's happening here, but... It's not my place to stop it. They decided they didn't want to die. And Mr. Penny's decided they need to 
be penitent and help them. Is there anything I can do? I want to, like, try to repair it, but I guess we just don't understand it enough. Yeah, nothing more to do with Melisine. Any more to talk about? No. I guess all I can do is leave the lair. Okay. Mr. Penny's waits by the cave entrance. You not tell people below, yes? Please? Refuse, bargain to keep it secret, or agree to keep it secret. Yeah, I'm absolutely going to agree. Mr. Penny's doesn't appear to be doing any harm. With thanks, Mr. Penny's croaks. It looks around for the nearest suitable gift, the still warm treasure dropped by its most recent failure. It presses it into your hands. Go without me, calls Melisine. I'll find my own way back later. Mr. Penny's shrugs with apparent ambivalence as you leave them both to their work. You finished your investigation and got a searing enigma. I really do not like the fact that my terror is 80%. That is extraordinarily bad. So I wonder if anything more can happen from that. Like, Melisine is going to stay there and study it. Can I talk to them later? What if I go right now to Murgatroyd's tea shop? No, seems like that's the end of it. They are back at the tea shop. But I can't say anything to them about it. Just the usual things. Trade two uncanny specimens for a savage secret. Look at their inventions. I did that. Nothing new. I wish there was more I could do. I really do. That was such a cool experience encounter okay now I think it's time to check out my very own claim on the mountain how is it going collector hall have some cargo space ready before doing this I've got plenty ready miners speak of a geode containing a whole century's worth of hours so big that it had to be dragged away by a locomotive your crew have not found anything like that. Without a factory full of equipment, the most you can realistically hope for is a fine bounty of unseasoned hours. They sit in nervous silence as you examine their efforts. The foreman has bad news. Sorry, Captain. It's a mighty poor harvest. The crew looks worried. A sign of their laziness, or just a poor choice of claim on your part? Either way, these desultory hours will have to do for now. Your Lustrum prospecting quality has gone. What does that mean? Does that mean my claim has disappeared, or...? Yeah, one barrel of unseasoned hours. That is terrible. Okay, I... <laughs> Man, based on the description of the claim and what the miners said at the tavern about what signs to look for for a good location, I thought that was a good one, but obviously not. I'm not sure if I can pull out of this claim and get a new one. I'm going to try to retrieve my crew. Thing is, I don't have any space, so what's that going to do? Every day it becomes harder to tell them apart from the regular miners. But they'll be glad when their work is over and it's back to the warmth of the train. Uh, you must have space for your returning crew. If you do not, you'll be able to collect them later. I don't think there's any way to get a new claim. I didn't want to end the episode just there when I was finished with Lustrum because I need to deal with this terror thing because it could very easily be the end of me. So. I was expecting to get a bunch of events because the terror is so high, and I was hoping to get one of those where you can raise your nightmare level for uh, in trade for reducing your terror by 50. But going from Lustrum to New Winchester, I literally didn't get a single random terror-related event. No event at all. I can't believe it. And there's absolutely nothing at New Winchester I can do to reduce terror. So I have to go somewhere else if I want to do something about it. So I'm going to go to the circus. Because I know that's a pretty good spot for reducing terror. However, I'm extremely scared that something horrible is going to happen. 
because my tear is 88%, and even though it, you know, should go to 100%, it seems like 90% is the top of the bar visually. That's like basically full. 90% looks like it's the full bar. So I feel, I feel like something horrible is going to happen when it gets to 90%. And I don't even know about 100. So I'm scared. It's definitely going to get to 90 before I get to the circus. Cracked glass. Okay, is that what happened when I... No, I'm actually not at 90. Recent damage to your engine cracked some of its windows. Now boisterous winds have shattered them entirely, exposing your crew to the maddening light of the stars. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. I dumped off everything in the bank, including the pane of stained glass. Shit. Oh, no. Lost two crew. Okay, that's... Oh, as long as I don't gain terror, I'll take it. Yeah, some of them succumb to obsessions. Okay. Please give me better events. Please. Okay, it's at 90% and nothing horrible instantly happened. Okay. Whoa, this music's new. Deep, bassy, creepy lines. I think that's playing because my terror is so high. percent we're so close so 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 close okay we might be okay new arrivals at the circus listen to their stories okay now we're down to 82 percent which is still real bad but that's something Collect our free tickets to the circus. And, oh, might as well write a port report, sure. Now... <sighs> so I could just completely cheese it and just keep visiting the amusements to reduce my terror, right? Because we know that that just keeps working and working and working. 82%, 72%, oh, that's so cheap. Attend another performance. Does that reduce your tear? Oh no, that gives me sky stories. Anything new? Uh, nope, same description as before. Yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna cheese this. I did the visit the amusements once. I think I should only do it a max of once for each visit. So, yeah, that's fine. Let's attempt to recruit crew from the circus. I have an 18% chance of success. Not surprisingly, I failed. So my saga's not quite over. I'm not about to suddenly die, but I'm definitely going to get bad events. I'm going to head to Port Avon. Rapacious tackety engines stuck on the reach in search of mineable hours. Okay, so they are tackety, but they are actually angry at me for messing with something that they were mining. So I guess I wasn't wrong to shoot them before, but I don't want to shoot them if I don't have to. Oh, hey, another one. So I'm just going to avoid them. Just run away. Cracked glass again. Leave them broken. Two more crew disappear. Right. What's the best thing to do? Well, let's always get a port report. Let's share some exotic gossip. I have eight. I think I'm gonna need quite a lot of this. My welcome is now seven. I'll do that a couple more times. It's now ten. Ten or more?
Whoa. This is an entirely new item. Roll of Thirsty Bombazine. This midnight-hued fabric grows heavy with devoured light. The perfect adornment for ostentatious grief and clandestine activity. Huh. Bombazine is worked in the dark in candleless rooms with boarded windows. A milk-eyed weaver sells rolls of the cloth she has made in her cellar. It's black and splendid, drinking the starlight thirstily. So it's light absorbent. Cool. Anyway, that doesn't really matter at the moment, does it? Quiet day. Ah, right, play a round of cricket. Down to 67. Thank God. Uh, and then... Village Green or the Nowhere Inn? What could I do at the inn? I remember I could read speculative fiction. Recruit a likely lass or lad. 43% chance of success, not great. The less traditional Port Avon is, the easier this will be. Traditional? Would getting drunk on cider increase or decrease terror? Oh, hey, I have a Cantankery trophy. Now we can ask about membership. Is that going to reduce terror? Ah, yes. The stout veteran twiddles his bushy mustache. Of course, you'll be most welcome once a spot opens up. Dead men's shoes, I'm afraid. And our chaps do rather cling to their place at the bar. But do come and meet everyone. I'm certain they'll be thrilled to hear your stories and slip your name to the right kind of people. Okay, you have technically been accepted into the club. I now have a cryptic benefactor. Weird. Okay, I just read a bunch of short stories and took a bunch of walks around this place, and I got my Terran down to 42, which is totally manageable. Also, remember when I was just taking short walks and, and doing all this stuff again and again and again in the past to reduce my terror, I was thinking that maybe there's like a hidden kind of th mechanic behind the scenes where if you do it a bunch of times in one sitting, in one visit to this place, it starts to give you diminishing returns. I don't think that's the case, though. I think I just figured it out. I think it's that you get diminishing returns when your terror is lower. Because when I was taking a stroll around the, around the village, it was reducing my terror by 5% each time until I got to around here, and now it started reducing it by 1%. So that seems to be it. Just sat down with the eel fishers and got it down even more to 37%. So, yeah, I'm, I'm good now. I can stop freaking out. I was really scared there for a while. Okay, well, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, honestly, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do.